Okay, today I'm going to show you how to set up a 10 kilohertz PWM signal. So remember that our peripheral bus clock is running at 80 megahertz. So this is the speed at which timer 2 is going to be running at initially. So the first step is this tconbits.tckps equals 2. So what this is doing is setting up a prescaler on timer 2 to divide the clock. If you look in the data sheet, you'll see that this 2 corresponds to a prescaler of 4. So we're going to divide our 80 megahertz by 4 to get the base clock frequency of 20 megahertz. Okay. The next thing that we want to set is the PR2 register. And if you remember, the PR2 register is when the timer counts up to PR2, it then resets. So we set PR2 to 1,999. So that means we're going to be dividing our clock frequency by 1,999 plus 1. And this will equal our 10 kilohertz PWM frequency. The next thing we want to do is initialize timer 2 equals 0. So that's this TMR equals 2, TMR2 equals 0 line. Here, where we set OC1 con bits dot octocell, this is telling output compare 1 to use timer 2. The next line, OC1 con bits dot OCM, is setting up the output compare pin to use PWM without the failsafe method. Here we set OC1 RS to 500. This is saying that on the next clock cycle, set the duty cycle to be uh, 25%. Finally, when we set OC1R to 500, that's setting the initial duty cycle to 25%, because 500 divided by 2,000 is 25%. Um, remember that after we turn on the timer, we can't write to OC1R. That's why there's these two registers here. So OC1RS automatically gets loaded into OC1R every time the timer 2 rolls over. Finally, we want to start the timer 2 by setting T2 con bits on equal 1. And we also want to set, turn on the output compare code. So that's what this line does. Finally, we might do some other code. And let's say we want to change the duty cycle to 50%. Well, then what we're going to do is set OC1RS to 1,000. And on the next time the timer 2 rolls over, we'll get uh, 1,000 will be loaded into OC1R. And that will give us a 50% duty cycle.